Greetings all. Today we're going to be talking about the basics of electricity. Specifically, we're going to talk about three main characteristics of electricity, which are voltage, current, and resistance. So these three characteristics of electricity are all interrelated using something called Ohm's law. And Ohm's law states that voltage is equal to current times resistance within a circuit. Now, we haven't covered what these things really mean, so we're going to talk about them using some metaphorical language. Specifically, we're going to talk about them using water. So voltage, if we're translating into water, we can think of voltage as pressure. But we can also think about it as elevation. It's a potential energy, just like gravitational potential energy is. Also, current, we can think of as flow. Just like we can have a pipe that has a certain amount of water flowing through it, we can have a larger pipe with faster moving water that might have more flow. Resistance is an impediment to flow. So we can think of this as a kink in a hose, maybe. Or we can think of it as just the characteristic of a hose to resist the flow of water. So, when we're talking about the flow of water, we now need to talk about elevation. So, for elevation, let's just make ourselves a hill right here. If I have a hot tub of water up at the top of the hill that is full, boom, 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 and one at the bottom that is empty, and I want to transfer my water between these, all I need to do is connect them with some sort of a hose. Now, due to the, the difference in height, the difference in our gravitational potential here, this water will naturally flow from high to low. And so this is our voltage we can think of it as. Now, our voltage is not going to lead to any flow if there is no connection between these two bodies of water. The nature of that connection, the nature of this hose, we can think of as the diameter of the hose, right? We have a pipe of a certain diameter. We could have a smaller one or a larger one. And so this would be lower resistance, and this smaller pipe would be higher resistance. In the same way that like a boba straw is easier to drink through than those little straws that you get to stir your coffee with. Um, so we can see that if we have a higher resistance, we're going to have a lower flow, regardless of our pressure. So if we look at this system here, we can see that voltage is going to be constant. That's something that's determined by the relative height of our two vessels. And current, then, is going to be influenced by our resistance. So we can take this equation and we can um, derive it into current equals voltage divided by resistance. But we can also just look at it the way it is and we say if voltage is constant and resistance increases, then current is going to have to decrease in order to preserve our value of our voltage. So now that we have some understanding of the basic relationship between voltage, current, and resistance, let's look at some more um, ways that they can interact. So in our previous example, we had a hill with a hot tub on it. So we have this hot tub here, and its voltage, the potential energy of the water held in this hot tub, is the difference in height between it and our other hot tub. Um, and so we would say that this is charged to a positive voltage. In the case of the Arduino, we might say that this is at 5 volts. And here, this one of the lower elevation is at ground. So called because of the fact that the earth, the ground beneath our feet, is the greatest shared um, low voltage entity that we have. Um, so in your home, you might have an outlet that looks something like this, 
And this ground connection there is literally connected to the cold water pipes that go into the dirt beneath your home. However, like I said, this is a relative relationship, right? If I was standing on top of a skyscraper and I am holding a ball, if I drop the ball in this position, it can only fall basically my height. If I, however, held it off the edge here, now I have a far greater amount of potential energy because that potential energy is relatively defined. So you may be familiar with um, putting um, batteries into some sort of a electronic device that you have at home. And this, when we put batteries in series like this, we are essentially adding a hill on top of a hill on top of a hill. So now we are reestablishing our high and low voltage. Series is not the only way that we can connect a circuit. We can also connect a circuit in what's called parallel. So series, like the term like a television series, are one entity that follows another that follows another. Parallel, like parallel bars, or what we might remember from uh, geometry, is two things that are next to each other. Um, in electronics, they're not things that never touch because they are going to reconnect to create a circuit, but we can think about them like this. So going back to our water metaphor, if we have our hill, we don't just have to, we don't have only the option of um, stacking hills to create um, a greater voltage differential, we can put our electronic components in series or parallel as well. So we have our hot tub at the top of our hill and one at the bottom. And as we were discussing previously, our voltage in this scenario is set. Right? Our voltage is determined by this height. And our current and resistance are things that we can play with. So let's look at if we put our two wires connecting. I'm going to make this a nice large tube so that we can not really worry about its resistance. But there is a kink in our connection. This is an area of greater resistance than the rest of our um, circuit. If I were to add another kink in line with this, now I have one restriction of flow and another re restriction of flow. So this is resistance in series. So the way that we can determine the overall resistance here is the total resistance equals the sum of all of our series resistors. So R1 plus R2 plus dot 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 until we've named all of the resistances of our um, imp impediments in series. And so these resistors can have different, these resistive elements can have varying degrees of resistance, um, which we could think of as the cross-sectional area of the, um, of the hose or tube in this situation. Now, if we were to, instead of putting them in line like this, if we were to put them next to one another, if we were to have, instead of just one hose, if we were to have two hoses that each had a kink in them, going to our tub down at the bottom. Now, even though there's two resistors, they are both in parallel with one another. So if we were to look at the cross-sectional area of each one of these resistances, even though they might be smaller than the, than the wire that houses them, that holds them, there is really double the area. We would add these areas together to get an area of a greater cross-sectional diameter, which means that our resistance would actually go down by adding more resistors because they are in, in parallel with one another. And the formula for this, for resistance in parallel, is our one over our total resistance equals the sum of the inverses 
of all of our resistors values. So for example here, if we had um, two resistors, each of which were 100 ohms, and the symbol for resistance, um, the unit is the ohm, 100 ohms, but the symbol is an omega. Here, if they're both 100 ohms, then we're say one over 100 plus one over 100 equals two over 100, which equals one over 50, which equals one over r total. And so since these are both um, inverses um, with one on the numerator, we can just flip them both and we can say that our total resistance equals 50 ohms. Versus a series connection where it would have been um, equal to 200 ohms because we would have added 100 plus 100. 